Hello, my name is Catherine Ma. I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Clinical Exercise Physiology at the University of New England. This presentation for, uh, forms part of my assessment for Exercise Science 335, Motor Control and Human Development, which is coordinated by Dr. Dominic McNeil. The topic for my presentation is based on laboratory activity relating to motor control and variations in movement. Postural control is the control of body position for both stability and orientation. It is a complex interplay between sensory information to perceive the external environment, respond to stimuli, and maintain the center of pressure within the base of support. Sensory information that is utilized to maintain control is somatosensory information, which provides proprioceptive information via cutaneous, joint, and muscle fibers. Visual, which is both, involves both peripheral and foveal, and vestibular, which informs the position of, and the movement of the head with, regards to, um, with respect to gravity and inertial forces. An upright posture is often considered an automatic function requiring little overt attentional control. However, the reality is that postural control involves complex interactions between sensory, perceptual, motor, and cognitive components. This complexity is observed as people age. A deterioration in all these categories with aging often leads to reduced postural control observed as in increased postural sway and more frequent and severe falls. In this lab, we examine and analyze qualitatively and quantitatively postural sway under different conditions. These conditions involved altering the available sensory information and observing postural balance, paying particular attention to motor movement strategies. Method. Observation were made and readings were taken from two university students attending intensive school in Armadale. They were required to stand on a wee balance board, which recorded and collated data to reflect the changes of the centre of pressure in both the sagittal and coronal plane. This data was used to identify the offset of any postural sway from the centre of pressure. Simultaneously, qualitative analysis was performed to observe and record the movement strategies employed. The movements, um, the measurements were recorded for the following conditions. Standing two feet, feet eyes open, standing two feet eyes closed, standing one foot eyes open, standing one foot eyes closed, leaning as far forward as possible without taking a step and in response to a stimulus. Here we have our results. As you can see from the graph, there is little variation evident between the two feet condition, conditions, eyes open and eyes closed, when only the visual sensors are, have been removed. We see an increase in the change of the center pressure offset or sway when, um, when the base of support was decreased by removing one foot, so from two feet to one foot. This condition decreased the amount of somatosensory information available. Then we see a significantly larger sway when the one foot, in the one foot eyes closed condition. This condition obviously had no vision and remained with the decreased somatosensory information of the one foot. So what does all this mean? The result of this of this test demonstrated the concept of sensory reweighing in order to maintain postural control. Increases in postural sway were observed when the stance variable was altered from two feet to one. This immediately decreased the amount of somatosensory information available, which plays a dominant role in maintaining balance. Therefore, sensory reweighing was necessary to maintain postural control, so the reliance was distributed from the visual to the and vest distributed to the visual and vestibular systems. Further increase in postural sway was evident when the visual input was also removed. <clears throat> Under this condition, as we already know, the subjects had limited somatosensory information, and then they are further challenged by the removal of visual input, therefore increasing the dependence on the vestibular system. The vestibular system when standing still is minimal due to the low gain at low frequency head movement. 
Therefore, we see a compounding effect resulting in a greatly increase, increased sway. Researchers have proposed that the increased sway in these conditions may be due to the exploration of a safety zone. It is interesting to note that there was no difference in the centre of pressure between either of the two feet condition, eyes open, eyes closed. This confirms that visual sensory information is not the primary source of information when somatosensory information is available for posture. Motor control in postural activities involves the interaction of the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system. Muscle synergies were first proposed in the 1960s. The neurological system combines individual yet related muscles to act together as a unit. This helps to simplify the demand on the central nervous system and is often seen in postural activities. The ankle strategy seen on the figure on the left is most commonly used in quiet stance when only small adjustments are needed to be made at the ankle joint to restore balance. This strategy was exhibited in the two feet stance and the one foot stance with eyes open. It is commonly employed when there are small disruptions to the quiet stance posture and the subject is on a firm surface. The hip strategy, which can be seen on the diagram on the right, sees a larger rapid motion to control the center of pressure within the limits of stability and was no, most notable in the one foot stance with eyes closed. This strategy is often used to decrease it when the decrease, there is a decrease in the base of support or response to larger, faster perturbations. It is important to note that the use of these strategies are usually a continuum rather than a discrete approaches, which is what we observed with our, in our subjects with the increasing sensory challenge. Research has shown that performing postural and cognitive tasks can create competition for attentional resources, resulting in a decline in the delivery of either task. However, when we had our subject perform cognitive task, it was qualitatively observed and self-reported that the postural sway decreased. This may be partially explained by an observation made by researchers in 2016, who suggested that focusing on postural control may have unintended opposite effects. The result of the less automatic control of balance and an increase in muscle tension leading to rigidity, causing an increase in sway. It appears that focusing on another task allows the highly automized behavior to function naturally without being negatively affected by conscious intervention. This observation has important applications. As we age, we experience motor decline, sarcopenia and sensory decline. Liso and his colleagues suggested that to combat, combat this decline when aging, we adapt with new motor strategies. Learning these new motor strategies sees us lose postural control automization as we move into a more cognitively demanding learning stage as described by the fitz posner model. This is similar to our observation in the lab activity. Although not necessarily learning new motor strategies, the increase in attention in this automized activity resulted in the increase in postural sway. This compounds the falls risk as older adults get more cognitive attention, uh, put more cognitive attention on postural control. To, min to minimize the risk, older people need to regularly practice new motor strategies to create higher levels of motor automization and postural automization under low sensory conditions. The fifth condition of this lab required the participants to lean as far forward and back as possible without losing balance. This allowed us to examine the limits of stability, the motor strategies employed to maintain balance at the end ranges of these movements, and the regulation of the feed forward and feed back strategies during balance control. Feed forward is a predictive or anticipatory control of the central nervous system to proactively maintain upright posture and balance. A common strategy when it is anticipated that balance is under threat is to increase the base of support or lower the center of gravity, both which were not options during this trial. 
Instead, we observed a preparatory co-contraction or stiffening of the opposal postural muscles in the direction of the lean, much like the muscle synergies. The use of these muscle synergies increased the stiffness through the body and limited the degrees of freedom. This forward, feed forward mechanism is considered the first line of defense in falls risks. The second line of defense is the reactive feedback mechanism. Although this study did not enable us to measure this mechanism, constant, constant feedback from our balance sensory systems would have supplied the central nervous system with information, for example, from the muscle stretch receptors. This information would be used to guide the central nervous system to increase or limit the amount of sway in order to maintain an upright posture. This may have explained the observed increase in sway with subsequent trials as feedback provided information on the limits of the safety zone, allowing for a conscious increase in the exploration of the sway range of our participant. This reasonably straightforward lab highlighted the complex interplay of sensory motor processes contributing to the intricate motor skill of postural control. Our ability to maintain balance depends on us being, able, being capable to adapt to different conditions within the environment, task and the individual themselves. This has obvious consequences as we age and our senses deteriorate, threatening our postural control under changing conditions and presenting false risk. Thank you.